Since I have been doing quite a few lamps and lighting projects recently, I thought I'd show you my top 10 lamp and lit DIY decor pieces I've created over the years. To give you a few ideas you may have never thought of to brighten up your space. Number 10, Stunning Floor Lamp Shades. This was a recycled upcycle project, so I'm gonna show you how I use a couple of plastic water bottles to make my floor lamp shades. I'm gonna show you two versions, and for the first version, I'm gonna be using these plastic colored divider tabs. Now I have an existing floor lamp, and this is the piece that attaches to the lamp shade. So I wanna cut a hole in my bottle so that the fixture can fit through uh, the top of the bottle. I drew a mark around the bottom of the lip and I want to cut that um, lip part out. I'm using my X-Acto knife um, but I'm just going to open it a little bit and then use my scissors to cut the rest of it. I'm also going to cut little slits going upward around. Push those little slits inward and then I could push my opening onto the fixture and it'll fit really snug. I'm also going to cut the bottom part of this bottle, which will be the top of the shade. And now I have the base for my shade. Now I'm using these divider um, tabs because they're transparent and they're colorful. So I'm going to cut off the tabs and the ends of these so I have um, single colored sheets. And then I'll gently roll these and insert them into the shade. And by overlapping the sheets I'll have different variations of colors for the light to shine through. Also I'm going to be using a LED light so that it doesn't get too hot. And look how lovely this turned out with those great pastel colors, geometric shapes. For another version of this same shade, I'll be using these magnifying sheets. I got these cool looking sheets from Dollar Tree. And again, I'm just gonna bend these a little bit and place them inside the plastic bottle. And when the light shines through this, this really gives a spectacular display. It looks like crystals or diamonds. Look at that. What a perfect way to recycle your plastic bottles. Number nine, upcycled wine bottles into table lamps. For this project, I'm using a few empty wine bottles, small prep bowls, and tap lights. Using Gorilla Clear Grip glue, I attached a small prep bowl to my cleaned wine bottle. The small bowl fits perfectly over the tap light which I'll be using to light my lamp. To decorate my lamp, I'll be filling my bottles up with water right up to the beginning of the neck. I found some old costume jewelry that I'm not using and I'm gonna use this and insert it inside the neck of the bottle. I'm just gonna attach a piece of wire to the end of it so that I have something to hold on to it and extend on the outside of the bottle. And after I get all of those pearls in, I'm gonna just wrap the wire around the mouth of the bottle. And then I could just put my cork in at the top. And after turning on my tap light and putting that at the bottom, you see I have this beautiful lamp that looks like pearly bubbles floating upward. Let's turn off the light. So I made a couple of these with different costume jewelry and different colored bottles and it added some nice mood light into my outdoor space. Number eight is a floor lamp shade I just made, the Lotus Flower Paper Lamp Shade. For this one as a base, I'm using a gold basket I got from Dollar Tree. Using my long nose pliers, I'm gonna cut the bottom part of this basket that there's an opening for the light fixture. To do this, I'm just gonna wiggle the pliers back and forth on each piece to separate it from the base. 
Now I have a rectangle opening at the bottom of my basket and I'm going to use the top of this magnetic tin and I'm cutting a clear part out of the top to make an opening um, and a circle that I'm going to attach to the basket. I put a good amount of hot glue on the bars and I'm going to center that circle right inside the bottom of the basket. I'm also going to put hot glue on the outside over the bars just to sandwich the glue and the bars and the piece in together. So while the glue is drying, I'm going to be using copy paper to make petals for my shade. So I'm going to start with six sheets of paper and I'm going to fold that stack in half and then fold it in half again. And then I'm going to draw a large fat petal shape and cut that out so that I'll have a stack of 24 petals. And I think that should be enough to cover one entire shade. Now before my next step, I want to paint these petals because I want them to be a golden color. I am using my metallic gold paint and I'm going to just brush on light strokes over each petal. After painting all the petals, I let them dry. Then I stacked them and placed them under a book to flatten them out. So I put my petals in stacks of four and I'm going to fold these stacks in half right down the middle. And I'm using my, the end of my paintbrush to roll the edges because I want to shape these like petals. So I did the same thing to all my petals and now I can attach them to my frame. So I start by gluing my petals at the top and I want the tip of the petal to be um, halfway above the frame. So I'm going to put a little hot glue at the top and the middle part of the wire frame and just attach the petal face forward. And I'm going to put a petal on every other bar going around. And starting in the middle of the bar, I'm going to place petals doing the same thing, alternating the bars, but I'm going to put the petals um, in between the petals at the top. And for the bottom row, I'm going to alternate the petals also in between the petals above it but I'm going to sort of um, bend the bottom part of the petal down underneath the and I'm going to put a few petals in the inside of this piece. I actually used about 24 petals for this piece and I'm going to make one more and I'm using this on the same floor lamp as I did in the last project. Also I'm using a low heat LED light because it's paper and this is my end result. Came out beautiful and when you turn off the lights it looks fabulous. My lotus petal flower floor lamps at a distance you would never believe it was made from paper. Number seven is my faux capiche shell chandeliers. So to make my capiche shells, I am using wax paper. I'm using four sheets of wax paper and I'm cutting them about 12 by 16 inches. For one chandelier, I will need two stacks of these, but I'll be making two chandeliers. So I'll need four stacks of the four sheets of wax paper. I also need two sheets of parchment paper and the paper needs to be larger than the wax paper. The parchment paper I'm cutting about 14 by 18 and I'm going to use it to help me bind the wax sheets together. But first before I do that, I want to give the wax sheets this iridescent um, look like the shells. So I'm using my silver metallic paint and I'm brushing it on just the first sheet in each stack. And when it dries, you'll get that pearly shell look. 
For the base of my chandelier, I will again be using this gold cage basket. I'm using my pliers to cut the bottom part out so that the base is open. But this time I'm cutting on the outside of that rectangle piece. And this will be the bottom of my chandelier. So I'm going to use my long nose pliers to start making some little hooks so that I can hang my shells from. I want to hang my shells from three different levels on this base. So I'm going to alternate. I'm going to curl the bottom and then the next piece, I'm going to break it halfway up and then curl that piece upward to make another hook. And these hooks will be for my bottom and middle level. And I'm just going to go all the way around and do the same thing, alternating so that I have hooks at the bottom and hooks in the middle. Now I'm also going to have hooks at the top um, so that I have three levels, but I'll do that at the end. Right now I'm going to set the cages aside and I'm going to make the material for my shelves. I'm taking one of the stacks of painted wax paper and I'm sandwiching it between two sheets of parchment paper. And with an iron and ironing board, I am going to iron slowly. And this is going to bind the sheets together so that I, I get one thick sheet. Okay, now after ironing four stacks, I have four thick hard sheets. And I'm going to take the first one and fold that in half long ways and then fold it in half again. And this will give me a strip that's about two and a half by 16 inches long. Now I want to make shell shaped circles out of this. So I'm using a two inch circle cutter and I took the bottom part out so that I could see where I'm positioning the cutter. I'm going to turn that upside down and I'm going to start right at the edge because um, this page is exactly 16 inches and I want to get eight cuts out of this. So I'm going to slide that in place and use the hole punch and I'll get four perfect circles out of each cut that really look like capiche shells. So I'm really going to position this right on the line and go down the strip and cut out my circles. Each strip will give me about 32 circles and I'll need 60 for one chandelier. And after cutting all of my strips, I have about 120 shells. And what I'm gonna do next is put little holes in it to hang them. So I'm using a hole punch that's like 1 8 of an inch. I'm stacking three of them at a time and cutting a hole at the top. And I'm going to take two of those three and cut a hole at the bottom. I'm going to use um, three shells for each link. So to link my shells together, I'm using split rings. These are 12 millimeter and they're gold. And I'm starting with the bottom piece. The bottom piece has one hole and the next piece has two holes. So I'm going to use my fingernail to open up the split ring and slip it in and through the two holes and just twist it around until it goes all the way around. And then when I open these up, I have one that is um, painted shiny and the other one is dull. So I want to alternate it from shiny to dull. And to do this, you want to always have the pieces line up on, on the right the same side so I'm using a doll side this time on top of the doll side and I'm going to slip that ring in and when I lift that piece up that side is shiny so I have a link that is shiny doll shiny so I did this to all my stacks of threes and now they're ready to hang on my chandelier Okay, so before I put all the pieces together, I need to be able to attach this lighting fixture piece to the base of my lamp. So I'm going to use this gold wire. I cut a piece about 30 inches and I'm going to kind of fit it around the lighting piece. And I want to have a circle that's just a little bit wider than a piece. And I'm just going to twist the wire all the way to the end. And with that wire, I'm going to 
make a small loop at the end of the circle. Then I'll twist the rest of the wire around the circle. I'm going to make four loops all together on this piece, evenly spaced around. Then I'll have a piece that looks like this, and your lighting fixture should be able to fit inside it pretty snug. If it's a little loose, you can use your pliers to twist the, the um, loops around to tighten it up. And then that other connector piece will screw on underneath that. So to attach that center piece to the basket, I'm going to take the gold wire again. I'm cutting a piece about 24 inches. I'm going to fold the wire in half to find the center. I'm slipping the wire around the front vertical bar and I'm tying that to the top piece and twisting that around. And then I bring both those two pieces together and twist the wire all the way to the end so that I have one long twisted strand. So I'm going to take that wire and slip it into one of the loops of that center piece. And I'm going to try to position that right in the center and then bend that wire over to the next vertical wire piece on the basket. It's actually best to put the light and fixture piece in so that you won't um, pull the wires out of shape. So you're going to go around um, and attach each of those loops pieces to the wire frame the same way and this is what it looks like so i'm also going to need little hooks at the top of this frame to hold my lengths of shells i'm going to cut pieces of wire about three inches and fold that in half and then i'm going to just sort of loop them around the top bar crisscross them and loop one side in and around and then I'm going to twist the wire together and then um, pull it forward in front and then twist it upward to make a little hook and then I'll cut off the excess at the top and I'm making hooks for all those little bar pieces so I'm hanging my strands on each hook and this is what it looks like with all 28 strands of shells on it that's 84 pieces now let's turn on the light and see what it looks like and look how fabulous that looks i just love it number six is my lit glass pumpkins for this project i'm going to start with a couple of different size glass bowls candle holders, saucers, and prepples. I am starting with my first size of three stands. So using my Gorilla Clear Grip glue, I'm gonna put glue all the way around the rim of one of my prep bowls. Then I'm gonna line my bow up, starting on the wet side where the wet glue is. So after a few minutes, I am going to attach that sphere to the top of this candlestick. So I'm putting a little Gorilla Clear Grip glue on the top edge of the candlestick. And I'm going to center that sphere right directly on top of the candlestick. Next I'm going to apply glue to the other candlestick holder and center that directly on top of the sphere. For my second stand, I just glued together two candlesticks mouth to mouth. For the third and smallest level stand, I'm just going to use a single candlestick holder. So starting with my smallest stand, I'm going to add some wet glue and attach and center my glass plate on top of it. And I'm doing the same thing for the other two pedestals. So now I have three different size glass pedestals ready to hold my glass pumpkins. To make my glass pumpkins, I will be using three different size glass fishbowl vase. For my pumpkin stem, I'm using these pretty leaf-shaped tea candle holders. So let's add a little clear grip glue around the edge of each of our tea candle holders and center and attach them to the tops of each of our bowls. 
Okay, so what I want to do is match this beautiful color that I have on the leaf. So I'm going to use my metallic paint, the Your House of Home metallic paint. And I'm going to mix these two colors together to see if I could get something close to the leaf shaped stems. Okay, so I think I'm going to go with this color, gold and black, with a little bit of bronze in it. Let's start with the smallest one. I want to paint in the inside because I want the outside to be shiny. Let's start from the center and I like to do swirls, something like that. Okay, so this part of the head of the pumpkin is clear and I want to kind of blend that in. So I think I'm going to add a little paint here. I also decided to add just a little tint of that color on sections of the stand. So I let all the paint completely dry on all the pieces and then start setting these up. I'm going to position the stands pretty close to each other and I'll put the smallest one in front. And as you can see now that the paint is dry, it has a beautiful metallic finish, it's translucent. So you can still see it's glass, but it looks like bronze with a really nice artsy look with all the swirls. I want my centerpiece to also sparkle with light, so I will be using these battery operated string mini lights. Um, I have this set that has about 35 lights and I think I can use just one for all three of my pumpkins. So with the control at the bottom on the tray, I'm going to start with the end of the light and I'm going to take a little piece of tape and put it right um, at the um, wire at the top of the light and I want to tape that at the top of my pumpkin but it's going to go right there and since I have 35 lights I am going to put about 10 lights in each pumpkin and then I'll tape put a piece of tape right at the end outside of the pumpkin and that'll keep all the lights inside so it looks like this and I'm just going to turn it over and bend the wire around the edge of the stand. So let's turn the lights off just to see what the lights are looking like. Now I'm gonna go to the closest pumpkin next to the lit one and take the lights, um, leave a little leeway, and I'm gonna take a piece of tape and also tape this to the inside of the pumpkin. Now since this is my biggest one, I'll add more lights, maybe about 15. In the smallest one, I'll put the rest of the lights in, which is less than 10. Then to hide the wires, I'll add some pieces of tape around the stand. And since the controller is on the tray, I can easily turn the lights on and off. Now to hide this controller and some of the wires, I'm going to use this ball vine garland. I'm going to take one end and just sort of wrap it around the stands and cover up the controller and I'm going to let um, the end extend all the way across the table and do the same with the other piece on the other side. And I'm going to put some pumpkins around just to cover up um, the wires and the controllers. I'm putting this one right on top of the controller. Now since I have these openings at the top, I can add some large tea candles and give it a more elegant look. If I don't want the lights on, I can just light candles or I can do both. Either way, I will have a beautifully lit pumpkin sparkling fall table this year. Number five is my crystal cage pendant light. Okay, so to make the shade for my light, I'm gonna start with these two gold baskets. 
So I'm going to use my long nose pliers to open up this rectangle shape at, right at the top. And to do that, I'm going to put the pliers right on the edge where I want to cut the wire and just sort of gently wiggle it back and forth until the wire snaps. Okay, so now I have an opening for my fixtures. So these baskets are about five inches high by seven and a half inches around. A little too small for a fixture, so I wanna put two of them together. It'll give me a nice round shape. But I do need the bottom to be open so that I could put a light through. So what I wanna do is cut off the bottom part of the second basket so that it is a nice wide opening. So I'll be cutting the wires on this piece right below the second bar. And now that I have the shape that I want, I'm gonna attach these two pieces using gold wire. So I'm gonna cut 14 pieces of this wire, about three or four inches each. So I'm gonna put my two pieces of the cage together and I wanna make sure all the rows are lined up. So where all the bars meet, each of them, I'm gonna wrap and tie with the gold wire. Okay, so now I have my cage lampshade base. Now for the fixtures, you can use a pendant um, that you have already. I did order one that was in bronze just to match this piece. Now, of course, I need something to attach the fixture to. So I decided to use the top of this magnetic canister I got from Dollar Tree. And what I wanna do is attach this to my metal shade. But first I wanna cut a hole in it that is just exactly the size of the head of my fixture. And this is how the fixture piece will sit in at the top. The attachment piece will screw in down here, keeping them both together. So to attach this, I'm gonna place my cap right side up and I'm gonna place the cage right on top of it, centered. And what I want to do is, I'm gonna use hot glue with Gorilla Glue Sticks and put glue right across by the edge. This is where I think the wires will fall. I'm gonna sit that on top of the glue. So I'm putting glue at the bottom and at the top of the bar. And after the glue is dry, I'm putting the fixture pieces together. Also, I found these Edison style light bulbs. These are LED, which is great because the bulb will not get very hot at all. And that'll be perfect because I wanna use acrylic crystals to cover this shade. I want to recreate this strand that I got from Amazon. Uh, this is a glass strand, but um, what I have and what I'm going to use are these acrylic crystals that I got from Dollar Tree. Along with a strand of the gold part of this diamond mesh. So I'm going to take this whole row of ribbon and I'm going to cut one strand. I'm going to cut just the gold part out. And then from that long strand, I'm gonna cut 14 pieces that are 10 inches long. And for the 14 strands, you'll need about one and a half rows of the ribbon. So next I'm gonna cut the strand up into three gems each. And I'll have eight pieces of this strand with three little um, gems each. And here's how I'm gonna link the crystals to the strand. I'm looking for one of the faceted lines and I want to actually glue one of the pieces from the strand to the bottom of the facet line. So I'm gonna put a little hot glue right on that line right at the bottom. Take one of my links and put it right at the bottom. I wanna line the bottom up with the bottom of the gem across on the other side and that's where I want to glue the other part of my link. A little dab of glue and another link lined up directly across and then I'll take my next crystal and I'm going to glue it the same way. Put a little dab of glue right at the bottom 
and then I'm going to attach that bottom part of the strand right to the bottom part of the line on the crystal. And this is what my acrylic crystal strand looks like compared to the real piece. So I finished making all the links for it, my two lamps and I just wanted to show you another alternative. So I made one strand with the crystals and using just regular diamond wrap as the links. So that would be a beautiful option for you also. Okay, so to attach these strands to the cage, I'm going to center it in between the rows. I'm going to put hot glue on that second circle from the top. And I want to make sure the hot glue is pretty close to the top of that circle so that it touches the bar. And then I'm going to bend the first circle over and press it. For the center strand, since I don't have access to that bar because of the top piece, I'm going to glue the first link right onto the silver top piece. And I'll glue all the other pieces all the way around in the center of each bar. To keep the pieces in place in the center of the bar, I'm going to put a little drop of hot glue right on that middle piece and stick it to the center so that it doesn't shift when it's moving. So each strand I think will be draped on the outside with the bottom part tucked into the bottom part of the cage. I also decided to make one more strand and glue that right at the top where that uh, metal piece is just to hide that and to finish it off. And I thought just to make this interesting I'm going to go around to every other strand and cut the bottom crystal off. And I think I really like that. It looks more like a chandelier pendant. Very lovely. Number four, tap light wall stunces. For this project, I'm using a couple of three and a half by five inch frames, silver sheer material, and crystal beads. Now this piece I want to look more like that inspiration piece with the dangling crystals and the silvery shade. So I separated the frame from the glass and I'm cleaning the glass pieces. I want to do a pleated covering on the glass. So I cut a piece of material that's twice as big as the glass and twice as wide. And I'm making pleats in the material by gathering and hot gluing at the top and the bottom of the glass. Then I'm folding and gluing the material on the other side of the glass. So I have pleated material on both sides. Then I'll trim around the edges and push the covered glass back into the frame. Now it's still transparent but the tap light is diffused a lot. After repeating this for the other two frames, we're going to glue the two pieces, side pieces, onto the middle piece. I'm going to put some hot glue down the side of one piece and line up and glue it to the side of another piece. Then glue the third piece on. Now you have the front and the sides of the box all together. And while it's still open, I want to add the dangling crystals. Okay, so first I'm going to cut a piece of wire, about 10 inches. Then I'm going to make a small loop. And then twist the wire at the bottom of the loop. Then from the other end of the wire, I'm going to thread a small silver ball, then a crystal ball, then another small silver ball. Then I'm going to pull that all the way up to the top where that loop is. Then I'm going to make another loop at the bottom of those three pieces. Then I'm going to cut the extra wire off really close to the loop. Now I just made one link for my strand of beads. To make another link, I'm going to take my wire, put it into the loop, and make another loop underneath that one by twisting the wire like I did at the beginning and add in another pattern of beads. Then you make another loop at the bottom and that's your second link. 
Now just to break up this pattern, I want to add a teardrop shape and this is how I do it. I'm going to put a small silver bead and then a medium sized teardrop. I'm going to bring that all the way up to the last loop and then I'm going to make a small loop over the teardrop and then twist the wire around in between the silver piece and the teardrop and then I'm going to cut that really close and now I have a teardrop at the end of this strand. Now since I want to add more beads underneath this teardrop and there's no hole at the bottom, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the rest of my wire, put it into the same hole at the top and extend it down below the crystal and then I'm going to take the other half around the front and then twist at the bottom of the crystal. That way I can continue to add beads to make more links and make the strand longer. Now for each side of my box I'm going to have three strands. The middle will have two links at the top, a teardrop, then four links, then a teardrop at the bottom. The other two will be different in that there's just one link at the top and the rest is the same as the middle but they fall shorter. Okay, so I'm just going to bend the top of the wire at a right degree angle and hot glue it to the top of this box. And I'm gluing the other two pieces evenly spaced inside the frame on each panel. And this is what I have. Now the reason I have the crystals inside the box is because this material is pretty sheer and I want just a hint of those crystals to shine through when the light is on so it sort of sparkles. Now to close this up I'm going to use two of the back ends from the frame and I'm going to take the stand piece off. Then I'm going to glue two pieces together so that they're facing each other and both sides will be black. Okay, so now I'm going to put the tap light on top of this piece right in the middle and I'm going to trace around it. I want to glue this tap light onto the back of this cardboard backing, but I want to cut out a window so that the back of the tap light will be accessible. So I'm going to draw a small border inside the lines that I trace so that I'll have a little bit of a lip to glue the tap light onto. I'm using my exacto knife to cut through the cardboard. And that looks good. Looks like I'll be able to get my batteries out. I also want to gather some material on the inside here. And after trimming the material, I'm going to stick this back into the frame. Now before I glue the back end onto the other pieces, I'm going to put one short strand of crystals at the bottom of this frame. Now I can glue this last piece onto the back. Since I see some light showing through, I'm going to put some diamond wrap on the seams. And I'm going to finish it off with a crown of beads on top. Now I think I'm all done. And these will go just perfect by my front door. Just enough light for the guests to see why they're coming in or going out. And it's just transparent enough to see the crystals sparkling from the inside. Number three, Bohemian Crystal Table Lamps. Now this lamp was inspired by a $150 lamp I saw in Pier 1. So I took a trip to the craft store to see if I could find some pieces to recreate this. To make this look as much like my inspiration piece, I'm going to start by spray painting an old lamp that I found at Goodwill using Rust-Oleum Premium Silver Metallic Spray Paint. 
And while that's outside drying, let's start working on our lampshade. For the lampshade, I'm going to start by using this decorative metal sheet that I found at Hobby Lobby. I'm using the largest sheet that they have. It was 12 by 24 and it's decorative metal ribbon. I'm cutting two pieces of ribbon, 25 inches each, to use as a border at the top and the bottom. So using my Gorilla Clear Grip glue, I'm going to put glue down the center pieces of this strip and alternate every other one with hot glue. I'll be gluing the ribbon about an inch and a fourth down from the top and the bottom of this piece, allowing a half inch of the metal ribbon to overlap on each side. Next, I'll be using four eight inch metal rings. I'll take my metal sheet and roll it around loosely onto itself into a tube shape. And you want the tube to be small enough to fit the rings around it. And you want to place all the rings around the tube and position the rings so that they fit right outside and around the ribbon border. Then you want to position the metal sheet, push it out so that it meets edge to edge. This sheet should fit perfectly inside the 8 inch ring, allowing the edges to touch. After you get the two edges to touch, you want to put hot glue right on the edge inside the rings and press and hold the overlapping ribbon down. Take the other piece and cut it so that there's a straight line and if you can line it up with the pattern on the piece below it and hot glue that piece on top of the other metal ribbon. You can add a few drops of hot glue under the rings to keep them in place and position. Since I had more, I decided to glue two more strips of the metal ribbon about three-fourths of an inch down from the first one. And I'm gluing that fourth strip right underneath the third one, but I'm positioning it so that the circle pattern is not uh, directly underneath, that it sort of alternates. So this is what it looks like right now. My base piece is finished. Now I need to make something to hold a lampshade to the fixture. I'm using a large washer and 18 gauge silver wire. So I'm taking the wire and I'm curling it around a circle to make a right angle. I'm using Gorilla Hot Glue to keep the wire in place on top of the washer. And I'm cutting another piece to put on the other side to make a cross shape. The way the wire is cut about 30 inches long each of them. Now I'm going to completely cover the top of this washer wood hot glue and sandwich another washer on top of it. Next I'm going to place this piece on top of the lampshade and center the circle in the center. Then I'll bend the edges of the wire around the top just so I know where the center will be. Now I'm going to move this piece down to where the first bar is on the shade and I'm going to feed the wire through the metal openings and around the bar and I'm wrapping it at the point where I made the fold in the wire. I'm going to do that for all four pieces of the wire and make sure it's tight but not twisted and centered on the piece. Then I'm going to put it on the lamp to make sure it's level and it falls in the right position after I get it correctly I will twist the wire around itself and I'm doing that for all four pieces. On the inside of the bottom part of my lampshade I want to hang a smaller ring. This is a six inch ring so that I can hang crystals like in my inspiration piece. So I'm going to use the silver wire to attach four pieces to this ring and I'm going to use a little hot glue just to keep it in place and then twist the wire around the ring. A lot like I did with the top piece, I've attached it to the bottom bar. So it looks like this. Since I couldn't find topaz crystals like my inspiration piece, I decided to paint my own crystals with my metallic paint. I'm using gold paint and I'm brushing just a light coat on one side of the crystal. 
I'm using acrylic crystals and I'm painting 12 large and 12 medium sized teardrop shaped crystals and 36 small ones. I got the small ones from Dollar Tree and the teardrops from Hobby Lobby. So I'm putting two drops of Gorilla hot glue on the painted side of the crystal and I'm going to attach that to the inside of the circle so it fits right on the edge of each of those circles. And I put a roll on the top edge and the bottom edge of the shade. For my dangling crystals, I am cutting some wire about five inches. I'm gonna take the largest one and loop the wire in and make just a little um, loop there. And then put the second piece, the smallest piece at the top. And I wanna make sure the shiny side is facing forward. I'm gonna put the wire in the hole, bend it, and make another loop right at the end. Then I'm gonna move, bend, and position the largest crystal so that it's right above in front of the smaller crystal, like this. Then I'll just loosely bend the wires together so that it's straight. And to attach these pieces to the shade, I'm gonna take a piece, put it over the bar, and then I'm gonna twist the back part over and make a little loop at the top and then straighten those pieces out. I'm spacing each of these about an inch apart and so that the piece doesn't slide across the bar, I'm putting a drop of hot glue on each side of the loop. This way I'm able to get two levels of dangling pieces using just one bar. Now as a finishing touch, I had these diamond stickers. I'm gonna put this right around the edge of the lampshade. And after making two of these, I have my very own Bohemian Crystal lampshades for my living room. Number two, lit wedding chandelier stands. Now this project was a very popular and inexpensive way to light up weddings and events. To start this project, I'm using a large acrylic bowl and some acrylic cups. With Gorilla Glue Epoxy, I'm going to put some glue on the lip of the first cup and glue that right in the center of the bottom of the bowl. Next, I'm gluing four cups together, lip to lip. Then I'll start by gluing one of those combinations to the bottom base piece. And when I glue these cups together, I want to make sure all the lines line up on each piece. All together, I'm gluing six cups on top of the large bowl. Using the acrylic pieces make it really lightweight and having the large bowl at the bottom helps to prevent it from tipping over. I already had these acrylic beaded curtains that I found online for another project. And I'm going to use about seven strands of these to give my piece a chandelier look. I'm hot gluing the strands evenly spaced around starting at the top cup. At the top of this piece I'm also going to be inserting a 4 inch battery operated tap light. As you can see it fits perfectly inside. I will be decorating on this side of the tap light so in order to be able to change the batteries I'm going to add a few pieces of velcro right on the sides where the battery opening is and on the bottom of a piece of styrofoam so that I could place the styrofoam on top and start decorating. I'm using a white feather board and I'm cutting a small piece to place right around the edge of the light. The top will be able to be removed so I could turn it on and off. And I'm also placing a few feathers around the bottom of the piece. This feather board, by the way, I got from Dollar Tree in the kids section. Now to finish decorating, I bought a couple of bouquets of roses from Dollar Tree and I separated by cutting the stems really short and I'm going to stick and arrange them into the foam to make a nice round bouquet, full bouquet. Now the last thing I'm going to do is cut about 8 to 10 inches from every couple of other strands and I'm going to use that to extend from the top of the flowers. I'm tying the last bead with a piece of wire so that I could just poke it into the foam. And I'll put a few of these around the top 
and you can turn on a light at the top and you can also put a light at the bottom of the stand. Then you have a beautiful piece for your wedding or event table or a bunch of these lined up in a row would be perfect going down the aisle. And my number one lit DIY is my silver and crystal arabesque egg lamps. So I ran across a picture of this big beautiful silver egg and I wanted to recreate it. So I thought the closest thing to those pieces looked like hair clips to me. So I went online and bought a pack of 60 of the large 3 inch hair clips and 120 of the smaller clips. So I like to make a couple of these eggs and for that I'm using as a base these glass candle bolts. Two small ones and one large one. I'm also going to use a small prep bowl for each of them and tap lights to turn them into a lamp. So I'll be attaching the prep bowl to the bottom of each face. So before I attach the pieces, the bottom of my inspiration piece has a silver stand and I'm going to use the prep bowl as a stand for these pieces. So I'm going to paint the prep bowls silver before I attach them. So that the light will show through these prep bowls, I covered up the circle at the top. And I'm spraying this with the silver looking glass spray paint so that it has a mirror finish. I'm spraying one coat, letting it dry, and then I'm spraying another coat to make it more opaque. I'm also spraying the bottom of my large face. And I decided to spray the white part of my tap lights. Okay, so now that my pieces are dry, I can start assembling them. Right now I'm going to use some Gorilla Clear Grip glue. And I'm going to put that around the edge of the prep bowl. And with my glass upside down, I want to center that right on top of the glass. And I'll do the same with my other two pieces. Now, while I let these pieces dry, I'm going to prepare my silver pieces. The inspiration piece has clear crystals in between the spaces of the metal pieces. But instead of crystals, I'm going to use these diamond stickers to decorate my pieces. Now the sheet comes with a line of stickered gemstones and I cut three of them. Because even though it has adhesive on the back, I'm going to use a little hot glue. I'm going to put it right at the bottom where that middle opening begins. I'm also going to put one diamond right at the top where that little circle piece is of each of these pieces. And I'm doing the exact same thing for the smaller pieces, three in the middle and one at the top. So I'm going to bling out 20 large pieces and 14 small pieces for each small egg. And for the large eggs, I'm going to bling out 24 large pieces and 24 small pieces. Okay, now that I have all my silver metal pieces blinged out, it's time to put my egg together. I'm starting first with the top of the egg. So I want to make sure that I position the metal pieces and I'm using large pieces for this. I want the large pieces to go all the way around and I want to make sure they meet at a point at the top. So the curve opening is going to line up with the, the rim of the glass. Okay, so to attach my metal pieces to the glass, I'm going to have to use my Gorilla Clear Grip glue because this is the only thing that will stick permanently to the glass. You can use this or E6000, but the hot glue will eventually come off. So I do use hot glue in addition to this. I'm going to put two dots on the side at the bottom and uh, the hot glue is just to keep the metal piece in place while the other glue is drying. My next piece will start right below the rim, right in the center of that last piece. 
On this piece, I'm going to put a dot of Gorilla Clear Grip glue right at the top point and a dot at the very bottom of the piece. And then I'm going to put some hot Gorilla um, hot glue at the top underneath and at the bottom above the Gorilla Clear Grip glue. And then press those down. I'm going to center it first and kind of press it down straight. At the bottom I'm going to put a small piece and I'm just going to put that right kind of in the middle at the bottom so that the bottom piece ends up pretty much at the bottom of the glass as it turns around. The next one is a small piece right up at the rim. Give it a little bit of space over and then the piece underneath that is a large piece. And then the third row will repeat the first row. So I'm going to put that large piece right at the top. I'm going to first make sure it lines up with the top point and overlaps it a little bit and then position it at the bottom. And I'll just continue these patterns all the way around. And when you get to the last top piece, you just want to make sure it's centered in between the two pieces next to it. And here it is with all the pieces attached. And I think it does make a pretty acceptable arabesque imitation. Let's just test it out with the light. And oh yes, now we're talking. So for the large egg, the pattern is pretty much the same. I have a row of large, large, and then small. And the next row is small, large, and then another small. So I'm just adding an extra small piece at the bottom of the second row. So I'll just go all the way around and fill in with a line of smaller pieces. So I'm just gonna go back and try to make sure everything's clean. There's always a lot of little web pieces. So I'm gonna use my tweezers to pull those out and shine it up. And I think to make up for all the little crystals, I'm gonna put one big crystal right at the top here. I'm using just a dab of my Gorilla Clear Grip glue right at the highest point on each side of the top of the egg, right at the top of the crystals. And then I'm gonna put my little crystal and make sure that sits evenly. And I'll do the same to each of them. And wow, look at this. I'm so excited, I just love them. And look at the beautiful light reflections. They just sparkle and are really dramatic. So there you have it, my top 10 lamps and lit projects. Hope you enjoyed it and got some great ideas. And I'll see you in the next video. Want more detailed instructions on some of these projects? On my Etsy store, for just a few dollars, you can get instant digital downloads of full-color step-by-step instructions with templates for some of your favorite projects. And check out my Amazon page where you can pick up my multi-surface acrylic metallic paint. Get 20% off now through the end of August 2022. Mix millions of colors and create endless home beauty for indoor and outdoor projects. And while you're there, pick up my Book of Elegant Home Crafts Volume 1. Put all your favorite projects together in one big beautiful colored step-by-step -step instruction book. You can now get separate e-project booklets and also full color printed project booklets will be available on Amazon. On my Amazon page, you'll see all my favorite crafting tools and supplies used on this show and you can add them all to your cart for the one click fast and easy shopping and delivery convenience of Amazon. 
I'll be working every day to make crafting fun and easy for you. Follow me at Your House of Home in 